begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! And what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Mayhem, baby. It's Monday morning. Hopefully you guys had a good weekend. Woo! It's cold up here in northern Illinois. It's getting there quick, everybody. Yeah, we're going to be going into the winter months soon. Sad state of affairs, as I always say. 2020, you can kiss my big old white butt. That's what I'm telling you, man. 2020's been awful. Had so much planned for the this year. Going to a bunch of motorcycle rallies, covering them, getting some good shoots. And yeah, oh, COVID-19 screwed up that ideal now, didn't it? <laughs> but I do have some good news. Been working, been working on this for a while, and people have been asking about a subscriber run. Well, I think I did one better. You know, I'm always talking about the old biker weekends, man, where you go out camping, just throw your rack, and have a bunch of fun and ride. Well, I haven't named it that yet, though, but July 23rd through the 25th at the Sugar River Campground in Durand, Illinois, we're going to be putting an event together. <laughs> Basically, it's going to be a big party all weekend and riding. Uh, 23rd, the arrival at the campground. 24th, you know, after everybody wakes up from the party from the day before. Yes, I'll have some 420 for everybody there. Well, not everybody. you got to bring your own, too. You know, I can only puff, puff, pass my stuff around, you know, limited quantities. First ride at 10 a.m., we're going to uh, go from the campground to Galena, Illinois. Boy, is it beautiful out west, man. Right off the Mississippi River. Hills, you won't believe, man. It's none of that all corn crap. Uh, also, we'll go over to uh, Poopies. If you haven't been to uh, the Poopies, it's a real popular biker bar. So we'll be ha hanging out there, riding. It's about, uh, I don't know, I'd have to say an hour and a half, two hour ride to Galena from the campground. But it's just gorgeous, freaking, uh, yeah, gorgeous scenery. And uh, riding on the Mississippi, man, uh, river, it's an awesome ride, too. Uh, then come back, party some more! That's what I say. And then on the 25th, uh, the second ride... I believe that's that Sunday. We're going to go up north to uh, Black River Falls in Wisconsin. Uh, that's about a three-hour ride. So a lot of riding, a lot of partying. And from now until then, you'll be hearing it. Uh, the only cost that's going to be associated with this is your campgrounds. And whatever you do for gas and all that stuff, it's a no-charge event. Just bring yourself, bring your old lady, and let's have some fun the old school way. There will be a link in the description box as far as how much the campsites are and stuff like that. They're pretty uh, reasonably priced, so I think everybody is going to have a good time with that. Especially after this 2020. Oh, you know what? They can just take it. Get rid of it. Let's go into 2021 fresh is what I'm saying, man. So, so bad for the, the riding season uh, this year. Yeah, a lot of events happened, but they were all toned down. You had all kinds of restrictions placed on it. It was funny. Uh, it's October 4th now. And I guess that Petri dish of uh, the COVID spread at Sturges, I guess, didn't happen. One died. And then, uh, what was it, like 200 reported cases out of 400,000? Uh, the media's been, uh, you know, really biting at our asses as bikers, man, because uh, I guess they just don't like us. Just don't like us. 
And what more American can you get as being a biker? You know, that's one of my uh, video blogs that are coming up. Yes, I've been doing some video blogs talking about the lifestyle and stuff. I don't really talk about clubs much because there's so many other people out there that talk about them. Uh, I'd like to talk about the fun stuff, uh, the way it used to be, some history, all that. So that's usually on the weekends. Make sure you tune into them. Tune into them. <laughs> Woo! It's one of. I think it's gonna be one of them weeks, man. It's gonna be freaking cold. Can't do nothing. One of them deals. The last week it was raining all damn week. So. But that's what uh, we got planned uh, for next year. You've been asking about it. Well, let's do it, man. Let's go back old school and just have a freaking party and fun, man. Uh, as far as trailing in your bike in, well, it kind of dis you know defeats the purpose of uh, being you know doing stuff old school. But that's up to you. Well, you're you're probably gonna have to get. Uh, a separate camp space for that so let's go on and get into the biker news today they act in a fool overseas again baby and it looks like leo is starting to clamp down a really good really good they're they're going nuts you know and that's one thing that really stinks is you have a few people do some stupid stuff and next thing you know man you got cops everywhere Cops are busy bodies, baby. Uh, I, <laughs> they troll this channel good enough. So let's go into uh, the biker news. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Okay, here we go out of the Australian Times. Acting a fool out there, baby. Mike Simpson, bully bikey gang members arrested by Queensland cops. Bullies. <laughs> what is it with bully, man? That thing, like, went at international. I thought we, like, got over that stuff in high school and stuff, bullying you know, men are men, and, uh, yeah, sad state of affairs. Two alleged members of the Banditos Bikey Gang are in custody for stealing from victims and threatening them with violence. Uh-oh. Detectives from the Queensland Police Organized Crime Gang's group investigation alleged, now this is allegedly, like I like to say, uh, alleged extortion and armed robbery offenses by members of an outlaw motorcycle gang have arrested and charged two men following a number of raids across the Moreton District north of the Brisbane metropolitan area. Offenses. You know, it's funny, you know, seeing the English, uh, the U.S. English version and then, you know, how they spell everything is a lot different. Uh, the group uh, staged simultaneous raids throughout the suburbs uh, and arrested two members of the Banditos gang, including the president of the gang's Brisbane chapter. Well, you can tell that this uh, media publication uh, don't like motorcycle clubs a little bit, huh? Victims were threatened with violence. Police say they will allege victims had property stolen from them and were uh, threatened with violence if a sum of money wasn't paid. Uh, they're trying to compare them to the out or the syndicate. I always get that messed up. I got to remember that the mob here in Chicago is called the outfit, syndicate, all that good stuff. Yeah, got to get that right. To date. A number of victims have been identified, but investigators are confident there are others and have issued an appeal for them to come forward. All right, I'm just going to come forward and say, oh, I'm sorry, can you arrest me? You schmuck. 
Uh, as a result, a 30-year-old man and a 42-year-old man were charged with three counts of extortion, two counts of armed robbery, and one count uh, each of using a uh, carriage to menace. Hmm, carriage to menace. I don't know, man. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Illinois prisons are real bad here. Uh, the United States prisons are pretty bad. Uh, just by looking at some of the stuff you see on TV, man, it's like uh, what we have is the equivalent, uh, you know, club fed over here. You guys got a pretty damn good, man. You know, I might be wrong. I might not be seeing the right prison on TV, but hey, I'm from the U.S. I don't know what the hell you got over there. Detective Inspector Tim Ledbetter, nice name, said this behavior clearly demonstrates the true nature of these gangs. So you arrest two, and then you blame everybody. Oh, you're just like the U.S. of A, baby. Uh, they work together to stand over and Bully everyday Queenslanders, victim, uh, threatening victims and violence for money. They have used their gang association to further intimidate victims to both meet their demands, but also to discourage them from complaining to the authorities. Hmm. Policing of outlaw bikey gangs criticized in March this year the vice president of the police union, Detective Senior Constable Shane Pryor. Do they, like, always have to use them long uh, titles, man, and try to make themselves feel important? I'm just asking. Just asking. Criticized the Queensland Police Service and the state government for leaving the task force responsible for investigating biker gangs under-resourced. Ah, there we go. Gotta get that money, man. Gotta get that money. Writing in an issue of the Queensland Police Union Journal, he said 80% of investigators were on uh, secondment and that repeated submissions to make the positions permanent have gone unheard. Well, apart from being a gigantic hoax played on the Queensland public for political gang and organizational reputation, hey, that sounds like what our politicians do over here. The model has real and dire consequences for all parties ex uh, concerned. Districts already struggling to provide a mediocum of effective police service to the community have over the years had to give up officers they can't afford to lose to a task force that neither the government nor the QPS could be bothered to properly resource for seven years. Well, maybe they're looking at that one report where it says, and it came out of there, only 0.001% or whatever the crime is committed by bikers in those clubs. So why would they want to fund these task force? Why? If only that minuscule amount of crime is being committed by bikers. Think about it. And there's your answer, dear dude from the Union. Now, let's go to my backyard here. Hundreds of bikes back to blue in Winnebago and Ogle Counties. Crazy times. You know what? That's actually a really good biker bar, man. Mostly yuppies. Mostly yuppies. You know, it reminds me of uh, that wild hog scene with, uh, you know, Tuttle Sr., but it is a good place to go get a damn burger. They got some good burgers there. But anyway, let's see here. By Ken DeCoster of the Rockford Register Star. There's a joke of a paper. Uh, about 250 leather-clad men and women. <laughs> That's a way to start off a story. Revved up their motorcycles and drove 100 miles through uh, occasionally uh, light rain, which it sucked yesterday, man. What am I talking about? Sucked all week, man. 
to show their support for law enforcement. The Back to Blue rally got rolling at Crazy Times Pub and Grub in Mackenzie Park and including stops at bars in Durand, Oregon, and Rockford before widening its way back to its starting point. Oregon, Illinois is freaking beautiful. If you actually go on my Instagram page, you'll see some of the video of the Blackhawk statue over there. I love that uh, statue overlooking the hill right over on the Rock River. Great freaking thing. Great thing. And Durand, there you go. We'll be over there for that camp out. Uh, quote, a majority of police officers that I know are good people. Crazy Times owner Pete Grisdella. They do the right thing. My customers support them, and I just think it's the right thing to do. Hey, you know what I should ask Crazy Times? Are you uh, patch friendly? I need to do that. Uh, people lined up under a tent set up outside the business to purchase t-shirts and wristbands in support of law enforcement. I'm actually going to be talking about this subject. It's going to be on a video blog called The Line. You don't cross it. Saturday's rally was the fourth such event held in the area since August in response to frequent protests against uh, police brutality and racial injustice huh. speaking about that man do you ever you want to know what it feels like to be hogtied oh boy do i got a story coming up about that an actual video you'll see it a uh, back the let's see here rally was held outside the winnebago uh, county criminal justice center on august 1st where law enforcement su supporters and counter-protesters clashed? No, they didn't. They stood on each other's side. Don't lie, man. That's why Rockford Register Star, you suck. About 150 boats took to the Rock River, that one I seen, uh, in support. A Back to Blue rally was also held on the 19th. Quote, if every uh, profession policed themselves as well... <laughs> You're kidding me, right? If every profession policed themselves as well as law enforcement, we'd have fewer, fewer bad lawyers, fewer bad teachers, and fewer bad doctors. So overall, I think police do a great job. You're kidding me. Oh my God, that's the joke of the show. Loves Park Mayor Greg Jury said. Are there reforms necessary? There should be reforms in every profession. But right now, everybody's after the police. And that's why they need people like us to come out and support them. Members of the Fire and Iron Motorcycle Club participated in uh, Saturday's rally. Club President Ed LeBay, a retired Byron firefighter. Now, see, I always support my firefighters. Uh, said the nation would be in shambles without dedicated police officers. They're a necessary evil, I say, but stay on your side. I stay over here. I don't need a beer with you. Uh, quote, we're going to have less than uh, stellar people in any profession, but I can tell you from being a firefighter and surrounded by firefighters and police, the stress level is through the roof every day, and what these guys accomplish is nothing short of incredible. We're going to have less than stellar people in any profession. Can that apply to clubs? I, I, I'm just wondering. Because I preach all the time, hey, wait a second here, wait a second, it's only a few that do this. Wait, what are you talking about? Can it please apply to that too? The Steel Pigs Motorcycle Club, <laughs> Steel Pigs, which consists of active and retired police officers, firefighters, and civilians, also participated in Saturday's rally. See, you know what? That's what I'm going to be talking about the old days and history and stuff. Civilians used to never be a part of cop clubs, man. They wouldn't be taken either. Club President Johnny Clare, a retired Rockford officer, said the club raises money for area nonprofits, including the Walter Lawson Children's Home in Ludd's Park. Well, you know, that's appreciated. That's appreciated raising money, but so do other people, you know. Don't just try to take credit for yourselves. 
I just want people to realize that there are folks out here in the community that do support the public safety people, and this is just a way to show it. Saturday's event attracted a number of civilians, including Dina Wagner of Rockford. We're here to support the police, and in particular, my nephew and his wife, who are both on the Rockford Police Department. In these times of unrest, I think it's particularly important we cannot have a lawless society. That out of Rockford Register Star to Schmuck Paper. Now, here we got a statement from the AFP. That's the Australian Federal Police. You guys, you know what? Here they come. Here they come because you're acting a fool over there sometimes. Uh, they're ramping up its attack on outlaw motorcycle gangs, or otherwise known as OMCGs in Australia, with an increased focus on all levels of gang membership and affiliation aiding criminal activities. National Anti-Gang Squad Detective Acting Superintendent Jason MacArthur said joint NAGS strike teams continue to clamp down on those OMCG supporters, facilitators, associates. Now, why would you clamp down on supporters if they ain't doing nothing but wearing a damn t-shirt? Wait a second, it's Australia. My fault. <laughs> the NAGS or NAGS. Now, that's perfect. A NAG. That's, that's perfect. Right there, NAG. Always busybodies is using a variety of tools and partnerships to target people who help to enable or facilitate OMCG members to undertake criminal activity, including those dealing with the proceeds of crime. So now with that statement, you should be very scared. Target people who help to enable or facilitate and the paragraph above uh, said they're going to clamp down on their supporters. So I guess buying a t-shirt makes you a criminal over there. Think about that, man. We have identified that some members have interest in outwardly legitimate businesses, including in the retail, transport, and construction industries. And in some incidents, them interests have been used to facilitate organized crime, and intermingle the proceeds from this activity. They're talking about money laundering. Our message to the individuals are clear. We are coming for you. That's their message. Ooh. Detective Acting uh, Superintendent MacArthur said the COVID-19 pandemic had forced OMCGs to either alter their illicit activities due to domestic and international border restrictions. We observe the efforts of OMCG members attempting to adapt to the pandemic and avoid the attention of law enforcement. Together with our state and territorial law enforcement partners, we've remained one step ahead and increased our vigilance while also making arrests from the bottom to the top of the packs. You know what I suggest out there? Just take the patches off. Just take them off. They won't know who you are. And they'll be crying and whining that they don't know who you are. They're only doing it for the budget. You heard the police uh, union president over there complaining and whining and crying that they're under budgeted. So, hey, work against them. <laughs> Law enforcement will continue to target OMCGs using both traditional and non-traditional law enforcement methods, including investigating tax and welfare payment fraud and identifying illegitimate business interest. The NAGs <laughs> will work with state and territorial counterparts on a daily basis and provide significant intelligence and operational support. So, bikies over there in Australia, be aware, man. This is what they're up to, these nags. That's what I think. You know what, you guys, you're so stupid. You gave us something to freaking really hit you on, man. Nags. Idiot. Now, let's go to K2 Radio. The former owner, and this is by Tom Morton, 
of the Rex Gentlemen's Club West of Casper said in a sworn deposition that a motorcycle gang controls the women who dance there and take a share of their earnings. The deposition of convicted felon Sonny Pilchler conducted by Casper attorney Stephen Winship on September 25th was part of an attempt to find out how rocks could stay in business when it has operated at a loss in recent years. Oh, wait. A convicted felon. Probably trying to get out of something, so he's blaming bikers, a club for his troubles. Friday evening, Pitchkler told K2 Radio News that the business arrangement is not about him, but rather the club itself and the woman who dance there. The arrangement is strictly business. It's nothing illegal. In a deposition, Plitchler said the girls are controlled. Anything north of Denver is controlled by the outlaw motorcycle gang 100%. The deposition was taken for a civil lawsuit filed by Monte Elliott and his Omega Construction, who are seeking compensation from Pitchler, Arda Blake, John Blank, Liglog, Cowboys Inc., Okay, it's a civil suit. Uh, Pitcher is uh, listed as a president of the CC Cowboys, according to the Wyoming State Records. However, he is not the owner of the club. Quote, they take a large portion of what those girls make. Uh, now, this is according to this uh, testimony or freaking uh, statement by his lawyer. Uh, but the portion of the transcript supplied to K2 Radio News by Winship did not include any questions from her. Every woman who work at exotic dancers independent of racks eventually will be discovered by the gang, which will take control of a portion of their earnings. At racks, when a dancer does a VIP, the gang would get 15 of the 10 or of the $100 to the dancer. A dancer who gave a lap dance would receive 25 and 5 that would go to the gang. Do you have proof of this? I really don't think you do. Well, wait a second. You're a convicted felon, given, uh, you know, an affidavit. Friday evening, Plitcher uh, told K2 uh, Radio News that the Mordecai Psycho Gang has an arrangement with the dancers in which they will take care of them refer them to nightclubs for work, and return receive a part of their earnings. Well, it's a business arrangement. You know, sometime, you know, I'm not, this is allegedly, by the way, but sometimes strippers, you know, they get some freaks that try to chase them down and stalk them. They need protection. Well, if, a, you know, a service is provided, you need to pay. That's capitalism. And, you know, it's, you know, if they're going to get them work at another nightclub, they should get a recruiter fee. There's nothing wrong with this. The motorcycle club does not abuse them, he added. You can ask the girls if they're strong armed. Doesn't sound uh, like extortion or whatever you're trying to push here, buddy. As part of the arrangement, the motorcycle gang will take care of the bills if Rax needed help with payments for utilities, he said. And uh, we'll see how nice they are. And here you are bashing them. They're help paying your bills. They're providing a service. Rax keeps no receipts of those payments. He himself receives no cash. The gang likes racks. They are good people. His dealings with the motorcycle gang go back to 1996 when it approached him about offering bouncer services at a nightclub he called Sidelines, he told K2 Radio News. Rex itself opened in the late 2000s. Okay, they're offering their services. Now what is wrong with that? You need security at these places because you got a lot of freaks. In the deposition, he referred to the outlaw motorcycle gang, but that's a vague term. 
There is a motorcycle club called the Outlaws, but the outlaw term could be applied to other motorcycle clubs deemed either not members of the uh, AOA and or regarded by the U.S. Department of Justice as organizations who members use their motorcycle clubs as... Con well, now, why would you put the AOA into this? Come on! We're not in Wyoming! In the deposition, Winship asked uh, Pilcher how the motorcycle uh, gang wouldn't know if the dancers were making money, keeping it, and not giving a portion to the gang. And he said could give an excuse that it was a slow night. The gang solved that problem by setting up a camera system. Uh, again, they're providing a service they like to have some money. That's what happens with capitalism. They're tied in the CC Cowboys camera system. You don't want to mess with them. You know what I'm saying? You don't. And they consider that you have, so you are a bitter enemy. I bet you are right now because you're talking a lot of smack there, buddy. In 2014, he pleaded guilty to one felony count of obstruction of the administration of the Internal Revenue Service laws. He admitted to claiming 258000 of false bad debt on his 2008 tax return and paying his employees in cash in order to evade paying employment taxes. He was sentenced to one year in federal prison during which he filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy, uh, a bankruptcy court judge uh, declared he should not be afforded uh, bankruptcy protection because he did not disclose all of his assets. Uh, he initially listed about two point or five point two million he owed to most local creditors, many of whom are construction subcontractors. Uh, Twenty sixteen, he was released from prison. He filed paperwork identifying another seven hundred thirty thousand in debt, bringing the total to about. 5.9. Woo! What a story, baby. Now, here's what I was talking about with uh, the wall of shame here from Corey Graff. A hog-tied black woman begged for help in a police cruiser video shows. Let's go over it. She hog-tied, baby. I can't breathe! This is not how Aurora police are supposed to transport prisoners. I'm about to break my neck, dude. But this is how Shatea Kelly was transported. August 2019, the back seat of an Aurora patrol car. I don't want to die like this, officer. Officer Levi Hafine arrested the 28-year-old earlier for fighting and other minor charges. You're going to be hobbled for trying to get out of my car. He decided to hobble her, tying her handcuffed hands to her ankles when he said she had tried to escape. Yeah, f***ing free! But on the way to jail, in the back seat of the patrol car, Kelly slips off the seat, becomes inverted. Please, can you lift me up, please, officer? Officer, please, please lift me up. Please, officer. It hurts so bad. It hurts so bad. And for 21 minutes, rides like this, upside down and begging for her life. This is some slavery sh oh, I'm sorry. I said sorry, God. <laughs> That is messed up. Please, officer, don't let me die back here. That's not what we're hired to do. We are not judge, jury, and executor. We are not to treat people inhumanely like they don't matter. He is lucky that she did not die in the backseat of that car. Because he would be, in my opinion, in an orange jumpsuit right now. Aurora Police Chief Vanessa Wilson said Kelly could have easily died. Wilson said she believes Huffine was punishing Kelly. That there was no reason to hogtie the woman. And the chief said she was struck at one point by how desperate Kelly became. So she assumed the role of a slave. Is as an African-American female that she denigrates herself to the point where she is so asking for help. She doesn't know what to do that she actually calls him master. Every time I got to beg you, master. Master, we do. That to me. Disgusting. Like Kelly survived the ride. Aurora dropped all charges against her. They need to pay her. Please, officer, don't let me die back here. He's lucky, and we're all lucky. God bless this woman that she did not die in the backseat of that car. That is messed up, man. 
That's a hell of a friggin' wall of shame right there, man. But let's go to my unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Hey guys, Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. You know what? When has it become a bad thing to provide a service and expect to get paid in return? Such as protection, so freaks don't get you. Walking you out the door, providing bouncer security, making sure the establishment is safe. When has that become a bad thing? You know, I think that's providing a service that helps the establishment. Keeps all the freaks away from the girls. And the girls don't seem to be complaining. They're getting job offers from other uh, establishments. So, yes, even, you know what, in the corporate world, a recruiter makes a fee. So, you know, that's just my thoughts on that. Strippers and bikers have always gone hand to hand. Bikers always make sure those strippers are doing all right. They're not getting hurt. None of that stuff. So leave them alone. There's no need to bring up clubs or any of that stuff in this. Jeez. You're ruining a girl's freaking freaking career there, man. Going after their protection. And if you think strippers are weak, ha, you've never been around them. There's some freaking, they're conniving, man. <laughs> they are, they're really conniving. You know, it's always funny, man. You go to these strip clubs and you see these guys like fall in freaking love. And you know what? A stripper will love you as long as you're flipping them 20s out. Just telling you guys, they're not in love with you. Never date a stripper, by the way. That's a bad scenario. Bad scenario, that's all I can say. As far as Australia, man, well, you've seen it from themselves. They're complaining that they're not fully funded. They go all crazy trying to go people, get people, man, arrested. Sad stuff. Sad stuff, but that's, you know what, I think that's legal all over this damn country. All over the world, all they want to do is arrest people so they get better budgets. The whole nine yards. We all know that. So be careful over there. They're busybodies. And as far as that cop hog tying that lady, man, that was messed up. You know, I've seen some stuff, but damn, man, she was inverted. She could have freaking cracked her neck. Had a stroke because all the blood going to her head. That was a messed up incident, man. And that's something she needs to get paid on. They need to pay her. Jeez, what's wrong with you cops, man? And you wonder why you don't get a lot of support unless, you know, you go to friggin' crazy times over here in McChenzie Park. And next thing you know, you got 250 of them over there. But like they say... The police, you know, police their own. My ass, man. Where are you coming from? Are you stupid? It takes them forever. You know what? All you have to do is watch one of the last uh, segments where a police chief said it's almost impossible to get rid of a bad cop. Police their own. Give me a break. You know what? You're on some freaking crack or something, man. Really. You're on some freaking crack. But... Some uh, videos that I do got coming up, and mostly they'll be weekends, mostly weekends, is the great American biker. You know, there's nothing more American than the biker. I think I'll talk about the strip clubs and bikers, man. They do go hand in hand. Also, uh, the difference between hardcore bikers and yuppies. All kinds of good stuff coming up, man. All kinds of good stuff. Don't forget to check out that link in the description box of the shows. It will uh, kind of give you the prices about the campground and stuff. And again, we're organizing it. It's going to be, you know, be over next year uh, in July. So we got a bunch of time to make it fun for everybody. 
It's a subscriber run and camp out. Let's have some fun old school way. With that, I'll see you guys on the next segment. Don't forget to visit Hollywood and China Dow's new channel. She's doing video blogs over there, and they are kicking butt, baby. Kicking butt. Talk to you guys later. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys.